Welcome everyone to uh, Agile Coaching Roundtable. This is the uh, 11th session um, in uh, ACRT. Uh, topic for today is uh, the anti patterns of uh, Scrum. Uh, I, as we all know, that uh, all of us, uh, most of us are working on a Scrum framework and uh, we uh, kind of uh, do a lot of things and uh, we mix Scrum with other frameworks and uh, also adapt to few uh, practices from here and there. Uh, today I thought of uh, bringing all these things together so that uh, we can uh, consolidate and say that what are all the uh, right uh, things that uh, we need to do as per the Scrum guide uh, in the Scrum framework and uh, what all are the things uh, are uh, we can call as an anti patterns. So uh, I have uh, put across few anti patterns uh, which I felt or I have uh, come across or uh, maybe I felt uh, which are like uh, key uh, uh, anti patterns or uh, most uh, mostly done anti patterns. Uh, I mean, I have just listed 11 of them. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that this is, this is the only uh, list, but there can be uh, many others as well. Uh, I mean, we can uh, keep on adding the anti patterns as we uh, experience or age in uh, Scrum framework. But uh, I have just uh, picked up top 11, uh, which I felt uh, were most commonly uh, done or practiced. OK, on that uh, note, let me just uh, pull up the PPT and uh, share my screen quickly. So if you guys are able to see my screen. All right. Uh, let me just start it from the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, we will talk about the uh, anti patterns of uh, Scrum today. Let me uh, begin with one of the uh, most commonly uh, practiced uh, anti pattern that is uh, sprint zero. So I would like to uh, understand or know from you guys uh, who all are uh, who all are uh, is practicing sprint zero or even aware of it. Can anyone uh, tell me uh, if they are practicing or uh, is aware of it? Ramya, hi. Uh, so, um, well, I um, before uh, I mean there there was this uh, project that I was working on wherein I was supposed to be a scrum master and we were um, in the transition period now uh, we did consider sprint zero wherein uh, we were considering that we would be planning the PI uh, in that particular period of time and um, also uh, the ceremonies because uh, we were just about to go into the delivery period and uh, that that is what we thought that sprint zero would consider basically planning around uh, how to go about and what uh, uh, what period uh, defining basically the ceremonies and the pi um, uh, and events yeah okay uh, you mentioned that uh, you guys were doing uh, the safe, safe framework and there uh, you were doing the anti pattern uh, or sprint zero, right? I, I will come to that anti pattern later on. I would like to just uh, understand uh, in which context uh, are we doing this? For safe, you, you were practicing this, right? 
not safe. We had described it as a scrum framework and in that particular, uh, yeah, not safe. We were not practicing safe. Though. And you also mentioned about uh, PI, right? Yes. OK, so when we say we are we were doing PI, that means uh, we, uh, you guys were doing uh, somewhat uh, of scrum and somewhat of uh, uh, safe. Uh, is that so? Uh, yeah, could be. Um, well, it was not defined as that, that we are going to uh, be following safe, but um, yeah, uh, we possibly it could be the thing, but uh, we just said we were going to follow the Scrum frame framework, but we had also uh, considered Sprint Zero. Um, okay. In any other for any other uh, member who has uh, practiced sprint zero? Yeah, generally uh, before uh, when we are uh, starting a new program, so uh, to keep things in place, we, we are putting as a sprint zero. So before uh, things get settled, so that uh, we can plan sprint sprint one sprint two next like it. Uh, correct. So uh, that that's what I was just uh, saying, um, Ramya. As Devendra rightly point, pointed out, it was a new program, right? Uh, that was going to start. Like we were just going to go into the delivery phase, and that's why we considered Sprint Zero, where we can plan um, the events and um, the ceremonies when should they happen. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes, uh, you guys were uh, absolutely right that most of the times or uh, whenever sprint zero is practiced, it is uh, practiced at the kickoff uh, of the project or uh, before starting the uh, actual sprint, right? So uh, let me just uh, share the screen again and uh, talk about it. Yeah. Sprint zero, as uh, as I mentioned, it is uh, one of the anti patterns uh, of Scrum. There is nothing called as uh, Sprint zero. OK, uh, whenever we start with a Sprint or Scrum, uh, the moment we begin our Sprint, uh, it becomes Sprint one. So there is no mention of Sprint zero, even in the uh, Scrum guide or anywhere else. Uh, People have uh, kind of uh, adopted to this uh, sprint zero just uh, to accommodate uh, their uh, logistic or any other uh, infra related uh, issues or uh, prerequisites uh, to start uh, with the actual work, right? But if you uh, if you see as per the scrum guide or as per the scrum framework for that matter, uh, when you say that you're working in uh, in a sprint, the idea of working in a sprint is to uh, deliver value at end of the sprint. So if you're not delivering value, then we are not uh, uh, doing it right or uh, the, the sprint was a uh, waste. So if we are considering a, a sprint, then we should be delivering at least uh, some value to the customer. OK, so in sprint zero, as we rightly uh, said that uh, we do generally uh, to uh, cater to the prerequisites or uh, any prerequisites. Uh, it could be infra logistics, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, but we are not delivering any value. So this is uh, something uh, uh, anti pattern. I would say there is nothing called as a sprint zero. Every deliverable or every sprint is counted uh, as a sprint itself, wherein we are uh, as supposed to deliver value. Uh, you may then ask, how do we uh, cater to these prerequisites and all of that? That is a very valid ask. So uh, what we can do is when we start our uh, sprint work, right? Or whenever we start our project work, uh, what we can ask our uh, development team is to uh, instead of picking up too many items or uh, going as per uh, the uh, capacity or anything like that, what we can uh, do is we can uh, just ask them how many uh, work items can they deliver 
in a uh, first sprint given that there would be uh, software installations required uh, that is infra setup done logistics and all of that uh, keeping all those things in mind uh, what would be uh, the number of stories that they would be uh, able to deliver or uh, the story points that they would be uh, delivered or even if they are not in a position to uh, even uh, comment on how many uh, uh, story points that they can deliver what we can do is we can just uh, do as a trial and error so we can pick very few stories uh, in the first print and try to deliver that so in order to deliver the value all of these uh, prerequisites will uh, be taken care of that is how we can fix this uh, anti pattern so there is no sprint zero uh whatever we start we we start with actual deliverables all right let's uh, move on to next yeah second anti pattern um, is a uh, variable sprint length has anyone come Hi, across Ramya. this situation yes hello uh ramya uh, it's about the first point at sprint zero okay so if we don't consider the sprint zero but what is that phase call where we collect all the requirements maybe the mock ups or maybe we have decided the team size the team skill set so what is that phase call so everything has to be done within the sprint so we are not uh, when you say that we uh, what is that phase that phase itself is a anti pattern right whenever we talk um, uh in agile we do not work in phases so all the uh, software development uh, phases we work uh, in parallel in agile or now when we talk about scrum uh, all these phases work in parallel so when we say that we are we want to gather our requirements we are not supposed to gather requirements for entire project so for that particular sprint what is required or maybe for uh, for two sprints or so you can uh, do that requirement or planning uh, uh, in the initial uh, sprint planning or for that matter uh, for that particular sprint for example you are working in sprint 1 so during your sprint planning you can plan your work only for that particular sprint that is sprint 1 so the requirement uh, gathering or uh, analysis or sprint planning whatever we call has to be done for that particular sprint itself uh, so that the phase is eliminated so we cannot uh, we uh, we do not uh, practice a way wherein first we will gather the requirements then we will uh, the development will happen and then uh, one sprint we will cater to testing so if you are doing that then we are doing agile that is wa agile that is waterfall agile so we do not do uh, uh, any uh, phases over here it uh, we just develop the product in uh, incremental and uh, iterative manner okay got it uh, ramya uh, ramya to had here like we can do it in the pi planning right the requirements uh so when we talk about pi we are saying uh, we are uh, following a safe framework right so yeah. what happens in uh, pi is that we do planning for uh, few sprints together so whatever we plan we plan for example i mean the number of sprints uh, we do uh, pi planning for it, it depends upon project to project right so some people uh, or some projects or some organizations they do planning for say three uh, sprints for uh, some do for entire uh, five or six sprints uh, uh, having uh, uh, covering entire quarter so it really depends upon um, the project uh, as in or what they have committed to, uh, to the client having said that yes in pi planning uh, you do planning of all those sprints together yeah. in my organization we do like that uh, we plan for uh, seven or eight sprints and uh, we work for that okay okay so in that case uh, oh, uh, if a capacity is been uh, asked like for example if you are uh, planning for the upcoming 3 months okay so we are working for a 2 week sprint so if they were been asking for the uh, capacity how uh, we have how will be calculating will it be the velocity we can give or uh, how it would be so velocity you can give uh, 
if your team has a past uh, history of delivering value so if the team is doing for the very first time uh, here typically if you are talking about sprint zero we do not have velocity over here you will have to give basis the capacity and calculation of uh, velocity and capacity is a uh, different topic altogether uh, and mm -hmm. i think i have already covered a video on that uh, you may want to check that video as well sure am sure i do thank you All right so uh, did anyone come across uh, this variable sprint length uh, i mean when i say variable sprint uh, length meaning uh, for few sprints uh, the sprint uh, length would be 2 weeks and uh, for few sprints it would be 3 and again it come back uh, comes back to 2 or maybe it, it moves to 4 did anyone uh, face this Uh, so Ramya, again, uh, yes, uh, because we were starting the new uh, project. Uh, they said that the first sprint would consist of three weeks. Uh, yeah, three weeks, and then it would move on to two weeks. So this is one thing uh, I had noticed or experienced. Okay, so that again is the uh, anti-pattern, I must say. Uh, if Uh, why we, why are we uh, defining the sprint length we are defining the sprint length uh, so that a development team can deliver value within that a uh, particular fixed uh, length uh, of or a fixed time box so uh, if we if and whenever we say that we are committing uh, the uh, committing to the client the length of the sprint so it is done uh, with agreement with the development team so once the team decides along with the scrum master and the product owner uh, the basically uh, once the scrum uh, team decides together this would be the length of the sprint then uh, come what may it should not change uh, uh, throughout uh, the uh, project or at least for that release so uh, if we are saying that initially we are following 3 then it uh, i mean it is advisable to continue with the 3 uh, uh, i mean uh, week sprint or else uh, if we are still not sure whether to uh, if it is a pro if the project is new and we are not sure as in uh, what should be the uh, sprint uh, length so uh, mostly uh, teams follow two week sprint because uh, two weeks uh, is a, a time uh, which is good enough to deliver value uh, considering that uh, team is new and team has to do uh, testing uh, review and all of that because we are not saying that one week uh, we cannot deliver value but it becomes uh, too fast for, for people to uh, really adapt initially especially initially so if you are sticking uh, if you are saying that it would be say three weeks uh, sprint then you should stick to the uh, same sprint length throughout your project so this again becomes your uh, anti pattern okay uh, third anti pattern is scrum master taking care of deliverables this i have iterated like many times uh, even in my past videos uh, this is one of the uh, anti patterns or the most widely uh, practiced anti pattern Uh, wherein a scrum master is taking care of the deliverables so what do we mean taking care of the deliverables where uh, where the scrum team uh, is or maybe take uh, working with scrum team in terms of uh, progress updates status updates and uh, getting into uh, technical aspects we are not saying that getting into technical aspects uh, should not be done but what we are saying is it is not the responsibility of the uh, scrum master as per the scrum guide scrum master's role and responsibility uh, is uh, is pertaining to the uh, agile values principles scrum framework uh, and roles and responsibility towards the different other scrum roles but not taking care of the deliverables the ownership of the deliverables lie Uh, lies with the development team itself because they are the people who are going to work on the uh, delivery of the project or delivery of the value so it's it's their responsibility to take care of the deliverables and not the scrum master 
i uh, i am sure that many of you would uh, be doing this is anyone who is uh, doing this or practicing this taking care of the deliverables yes ramya mostly we as a scrum master uh, i am taking care of deliverables also. okay and so, uh, I'm asking for the status of the update when they are not updating status. So I'm taking a, taking a status from them and updating to superiors. So this is happening still. But okay. not uh, abiding this come. Okay. And anyone else who is taking care of the deliverables? If we are not doing so, then uh, that's a really uh, good practice. But if we are doing that and uh, if we are stuck in a situation, how do we, uh, I mean, uh, avoid this or how do we tell this? Only way to take care of uh, this situation is by educating about it. To whoever is asking uh, you to take care of the deliverables, it is through education uh, and uh, uh, coaching that you can uh, get rid of uh, taking care of deliverables. You, it's uh, it's your uh, duty to educate uh, the uh, I mean management or leadership or uh, uh, team client whoever it it would be who is asking you to take care of, uh, take care of the deliverable uh, and educate them uh, and uh, tell them what would happen if you do not, if you take care and uh, if you do not take care. So that is the way uh, how you can avoid uh, doing this. So it is really important that you you at least as a scrum master define your roles and responsibilities very clearly. Next time you pattern. Yes, sorry, Ramya, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, well, uh, what what is the ideal way to let them know about it? Because many times it might just come across that you're running away from extra uh, from taking off responsibility or so. So what is it that you would say would be an ideal way to educate them so that they're aware that, you know, this is not the right thing to do? Right. So uh, as you mentioned that uh, they uh, tag you as uh, running away from the responsibilities, right? So when we talk about uh, implementing uh, Agile or if, uh, when we talk about implementing Scrum uh, in particular, who is uh, the person who is knowledgeable about that uh, framework? It's the scrum masters, right? So that is the reason why we are appointed in a particular uh, account or a project to uh, inculcate that scrum values and principles, uh, scrum uh, framework or uh, take care of all the components of scrum framework, right? And for us, only a way to uh, teach others is through the scrum guide because we fall back to scrum guide, right? So where do we get that information from? We refer to the scrum guide and we follow so that becomes our guidelines right what what do we do and what we uh, we are not uh, doing it or what are we not supposed to do we get that guidelines from the scrum guide you can very well say that uh, as per the scrum guide uh, it is not the responsibility of a scrum master the ownership lies with the development team so initially uh, i mean i i understand that uh, people uh, would be very reluctant uh, to this saying that why is that so who will who will take care of the deliverables then and this and that right for that you will have to empower and encourage the development team to take uh, the accountability and responsibility of their own deliverables so if you are uh, empowering and enabling them is when they will become self uh, sufficient and self organized to take care of deliverables and that is how you can slowly uh, with a lot of training and coaching get uh, rid of it or else when you uh, newly start the project at that point of time itself you can clearly define your roles and responsibility saying that this is my scope this would be out of scope the way you have a uh, 
uh, in waterfall you have a project plan right uh, we uh, have uh, in that project plan we mention all the uh, uh, all the parameters or sections wherein we also have uh, in scope and out of scope section so in scope you define all the items that you would be covering and in out of scope you you mention all the items uh, which you do not have uh, control on right or which you do not uh, come under your purview similarly we are not saying that have a project plan but you can clearly define your scope and uh, your uh, out of scope things at the beginning of your project itself so if you i mean it 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 really uh, is up to you i mean how much you take it and how much you leave it right so if you allow others to give that responsibility to you others will definitely uh, put that responsibility on you because uh, as you know that uh, the more you give the less it is so that is how it is that's how you have you will you will have to slowly and slowly uh, educate or train uh, the leadership uh, on your roles and responsibility for that matter not only your roles and responsibility but uh, all the roles and responsibilities of each role of scrum framework sure ma'am thank you Okay. Next, uh, anti pattern is board is not updated. So when I mention board is not updated, this board could be any board. This could be board on Jira. Uh, it could be on Azure DevOps or any other tool that you would be using it. So uh, why I am saying this is anti pattern? Because if when the board is not updated, the information is not. passed on to the right people uh, or the relevant information is not passed on to the uh, people uh, who are uh, uh, dependent on this information and uh, what happens is uh, if you do not update the board is when your scrum events uh, or your uh, typically a uh, scrum call becomes your uh, reporting uh, call or status update call so if you ask your team members to timely update their board is when there is no need for anyone to ask or check the status all you can do is then you can in your scrum calls just open the uh, the uh, sprint backlog of any tool that you might be using and looking at the uh, uh, board updates you can dev, uh, easily tell what is or ask what is the progress and uh, i mean uh, since we have covered this the idea of having this scrum call is again not a status update it is just to see uh, where are we in terms of achieving the sprint goal are there any risks and impediments so if the board itself is not updated our agenda then becomes a status update call to uh, to uh, avoid this it is very important that uh, we are uh, making our team uh, accountable in updating uh, their uh, work items regularly okay next anti pattern is product owner is absent how many of you uh, have faced this problem that in your project product owner is not present i face this issue also on daily daily basis okay uh, and uh, what do you do if your product owner um, is not present i tried to talk to him like couple of times but he said like he is busy with some other tasks so i can uh, he asked me to take over the call and uh, once uh, stand up call is over or any updates are there he asked me to update him personally this is how it's happening okay any other person is facing this it happens like this uh, when the, then there is a no product owner uh, it will uh, it will be like this in a uh, turn base one person will act as a product owner proxy product owner and next day another proxy owner so in that case it can turn okay yes uh, product owner uh, is like backbone of uh, the uh, scrum framework 
right why am i saying he is the backbone because he is the person who understands the business he is the person who represents the business if that person who uh, who is understanding uh, who understands the business is not present then what are we going to deliver how are we going to deliver and whether whatever we understand uh, what we are delivering who is going to validate whether we are delivering that value or not right so the basic essence of doing uh, uh, the uh, entire project or the entire uh, uh, scrum itself is lost if there is no product owner the role of the product owner is to translate the requirements and uh, make them uh, make the requirements uh, understandable to the development team so that development team can get the clear understanding of the requirements and convert that requirements into workable software and deliver value to the customer so it's an entire uh, loop or a circle uh, where each person is dependent on other so if we do not have a product owner it's a high time for us to raise this point and when we say we raise this point we need to raise this point with a valid uh, reason or uh, justification the way i have said the absent uh, the drawback of not having a of a product owner and benefit of having a product owner if we can educate the client or the uh, management about it is when they are going to understand it so as uh, devender also mentioned so if you do not have any representative uh, from client side or the from the customer side as a product owner then what we can do is we uh, from our from uh, our side we can appoint a proxy product owner who can actually talk uh, to the business and uh, take care of uh, the role of the uh, product owner so this uh, is kind of a makeshift arrangement i must say but uh, at least we'll have some representative right and uh, nowadays i have seen a lot of organizations who do this even if we have a product owner from the business side so there would be one counterpart from uh, from our end who would be uh, coordinating with the actual product owner and that proxy product owner in turn coordinates with the development team so this is how nowadays uh, uh, people are or organizations are adapting to this uh, or uh, taking care of this situation but a product owner is very important for for any project who is uh, which is operating uh, in a scrum framework all right actually Next. yes so actually uh, ba is playing that role uh, so ba and me are co uh, communicating with the client and taking requirements and ba is writing the uh, user stories and all so we are communicating with the client so again when you say that uh, ba is doing that ba there is no role of ba in scrum framework if you have noticed all all that we have is product owner scrum master and development team Yeah. but we of... usually work in a spotify model here okay so yeah. that again uh, i mean uh, since spotify model is bit different than scrum obviously even in that case we cannot uh, operate without that person uh, who takes care of the requirements right there has to be someone who take uh, taking care of the uh, who is taking care of the requirement there when you say ba again in scrum frameworks context that person becomes the product owner because he is the person who is going to work with the client to understand the requirements so again uh, more or less that person becomes the proxy product owner if that person is from yes. uh, your organization end yes yes exactly it's the same thing which is happening okay all Thanks. right yeah no issues next anti pattern uh, that is anti pattern number 6 is development team working on ad hoc not so prioritized work i mean this is also most commonly faced uh, issue wherein we have seen that uh, uh, the management or leadership what they do is they just pull in people 
uh, from uh, your scrum team and they assign some work to them saying that this is a priority item please take care of it and that person instead of working on the prioritized uh, sprint backlog item then go uh, goes to goes out of the way to complete the work assigned uh, by the management and management could be line of ma line manager or whoever reporting manager whoever right so this again is the anti pattern this scrum uh, the development team is not supposed to work on any non prioritized work item apart from the sprint backlog whatever your team does should be uh, should be mentioned in your sprint backlog if any of your team members are working on any item apart from the sprint backlog items then that they are not uh, working to deliver that value they are not working to achieve your sprint goal so this is something up to scrum masters to take care of uh, to ensure that your team member is not working on any ad hoc task or any non prioritized item or any random item which is not part of your sprint backlog all right uh, let's move on to the next one uh, next one is uh, anti pattern number 7 that is micromanagement micromanagement uh, is like i can say is a bottleneck to any of our work environment it is uh, it just spoils the work environment or culture that uh, we are uh, working with so agile or scrum does not promote micromanagement when we say that we are doing uh, uh, we are just keeping a tab on each and every individual what they are doing how they are doing how many hours that they have spent what are they doing in the uh, rest of the hours all those things come under micromanagement the idea of having or working in scrum is to just deliver value and deliver value frequently in a uh, iterative and incremental uh, fashion and in order to do that we do our work in collaboration with each other we respect each other we value each other's opinion and there is no place and no room for micromanagement in uh, scrum and in agile as a whole if we are if we are a victim of micromanagement it is a responsibility of a scrum master to ensure that the team is not micromanaged it could be by management it could be by any senior it could be by development team within development team and it could be by clients as well you have every right to call out this practice and when we do this definitely we have to talk diplomatically we have to talk with uh, data or facts you have to uh, understand why this is happening and why do we have this micromanagement uh, in uh, place first of all people tend to micromanage because they are, they do not know what is the update or what is the progress on the work that is assigned to some individual so to tackle this if you or you as in uh, if you as a part of a scrum team or a development team updates the uh, progress or gives the updates to the concerned person on a timely basis then micromanagement uh, can be avoided in a way the most of the times micromanagement is done because the seniors or leadership or clients are not aware of the status of that particular work item so to avoid this in a way what you can do is you can proactively give the updates or progress or whatever has anyone uh, tackled uh, micromanagement or maybe a victim of micromanagement and if yes then how did uh, you tackle this situation i would like to really know uh, which which is the technique that you have uh, applied to tackle this micromanagement anyone if you can just uh, tell me uh, 
or at least uh, has anyone been a victim of micromanagement when i say victim of micromanagement not you uh, as an individual at least uh, you as a part of your scrum team anyone has uh, faced this situation Generally, in the uh, beginning, when we don't know the team, we'll be observing keenly, na. So, is it not micromanagement? Sorry, uh, could you please repeat? In the beginning, uh, we don't know the team, so we want to to know the team. We'll be keenly observing each and every one to know right. about uh, about the person. Uh, yes. We may not be controlling, but we will be observing. Is it not micromanagement? Just I was uh, doubting. Yes. So observation uh, is uh, a different thing altogether. As you rightly mentioned, it is uh, observation is not uh, controlling. So wherever there is control and command involved, there would be uh, room for micromanagement. So instead of controlling and uh, commanding, if we can. can uh, support or collaborate we can uh, in a way avoid micromanagement so whoever does micromanagement uh, whoever uh, is in that uh, power of position who does micromanagement first thing that we need to cut down on is that control and command thing so we have we as a scrum masters have to bring in that environment wherein we uh, collaborate with each other and uh, we respect each other trust each other the root cause of micromanagement uh, is lack of trust so if we trust each other we no one would fall prey to micromanagement okay next anti pattern that is anti pattern number 8 is no retrospective meeting is this happening in your project or in your past project has this happened to anyone wherein retrospective uh, is not followed or not done okay uh most of the uh, uh, projects that uh, i have witnessed or many of the scrum masters uh, uh, reach out to me saying that we do not have uh, we don't do retrospectives because client has said no or team members feel uh, it's a waste of time and all all of those reasons because of those reasons people tend to skip retrospective because retrospective is most neglected uh, event of uh, scrum so it is again a anti pattern and it is most commonly practiced anti pattern we as a scrum masters we need to ensure that retrospective uh, re retrospective uh, meeting is done and for that matter all the scrum events are done uh, at the given uh, time and to explain or get team to practice this uh, all we need to do is make them understand why do we need retrospective educate them on what is the purpose of doing that retrospective and i have also seen i mean it could be a different topic altogether on retrospective wherein retrospective becomes the complaint meeting or retrospective becomes the blame game that i mean people just wait with grudges just to take out their uh, grudges on each other during the retrospective no the idea of retrospective is not to pinpoint each other or take grudges on each other the idea of retrospective is to inspect and adapt so it is the responsibility of a scrum master to explain it to the team that or to the client whoever opposes the retrospective meeting it is it is your responsibility to explain them that the retrospective purpose is to inspect and adapt and not to blame game or uh, finger point anyone and if it if that is happening you should ensure that you give that uh, 
platform and environment wherein this blame game doesn't happen. Okay. Anti pattern number nine team members not attending scrum event. Yeah, this is also one of the uh, most commonly faced problems. Many scrum masters say this that we are following all the scrum events, but then not everyone is attending this call. Not everyone is attending that call. And what do we do? I have explained enough, but then they feel it's waste of time. And instead of spending that time, uh, that much time on uh, the scrum events, uh, we would uh, rather focus on the assigned work. Back in the days when even I was a scrum master, I did face a similar problem wherein uh, or uh, not as a scrum master in an agile transformation project, wherein a scrum master or a lead uh, had reached out saying that uh, so and so person uh, is not willing to attend the calls. I mean, this was a conversation and if you guys have are following me on LinkedIn, I have posted about it as well uh, very recently. So there was this, uh, I would like to just uh, narrate that incidents over here as well. Um, so there was this conversation I overheard uh, between the uh, project uh, or a program manager and uh, a lead, wherein a lead was saying that my uh, team member, one of the team members is not interested in attending the scrum uh, event. And uh, he says that it's a waste of time and all of that. So the uh, program manager uh, or uh, project manager, uh, whoever uh, that person has uh, mentioned uh, to the lead asking him that whether have you not uh, informed the person that it is a mandatory or a compulsory meeting to be attended and why is that person not attending? So uh, the lead responded saying that uh, my team member told me instead of um, me attending the session or event, uh, I would rather give a status update to you over a chat and you as a lead should in turn attend that uh, meeting and give the status update to the client. So this is what the conversation happened. So the um, project manager or program manager suggested that uh, to the lead saying that I think you should reach out to that team members line manager escalate this saying that ask the line manager to make this guy attend the scrum calls because it is mandatory. Otherwise client will not understand what are the updates. So this was a conversation in one of the calls uh, and then call got ended. So I just reached out to the lead after that saying that uh, do not reach out to his line manager. I would like to attend your uh, scrum call uh, next day. And I would like to uh, explain the important importance of all the scrum events uh, in a scrum framework. So next day I did that. I just went into the call and I just explained them that the purpose of all the scrum events in a scrum framework is for self reflection. It is not for giving status update, it is not for giving progress, it is not for any other thing, but it is for self reflection. So that so one of the team members asked me, why is uh, that important? Why do we have to do the self reflection and how do we do that? We have never done that. So I just explained them saying that self reflection is was always part of our curriculum and also academics. So they were puzzled. I mean, how was that possible? So I mentioned that it's not that something you have not done in the past. You were very much doing that in even in your college and school. So in schools and colleges, we used to have our exams, right? So why we used to have our exams? Have we uh, thought about it? The reason why we used to have the exams is to reflect on what we have understood uh, in our lectures by our professors or teachers. How much have you understood uh, in that particular uh, uh, subject is why we used to have our exams. So that was the first level of uh, self reflection that we used to do in terms of uh, attending the exams. And the second level is that even during our exams, whenever we used to finish writing the answers and complete uh, 
completing all att attempting all the answers if we have some time left have we not attended or have we not revisited our answers be it mcqs or the uh, answer in brief just to be sure that if whatever we have written correctly or not to so that uh, the team members said yes we did so i said that's it then we did our self reflection even at an individual level right so even as an individual when we were attempting our uh, exams or attending our exams we used to do that self reflection by rechecking all our answers and if required we used to correct uh, the answers wherever we felt uh, that we should uh, correct the answers so that was the level of self reflection we used to do so see, similar self reflection is required even at our work here we do not have exams obviously so in order to uh, do the self reflection we do that in the form of scrum events in the scrum framework so each and every scrum event is designed is a is the opportunity for us to do the self reflection together as a team obviously we do not do that individually we do together as a team and that is the purpose of all these scrum events uh, in a scrum framework so this is what i have explained to the uh, team entire team and after that all the scrum uh, all the team members started attending that uh, all the scrum events so this is what one should do as a scrum master if you find any of your team members not attending uh, the scrum events so it is your responsibility as a scrum master to make them understand uh, the importance benefit and their contribution uh, as a team member in in the scrum team once they understand and that is when they are going to attend all these scrum events and not saying that we will escalate to the manager or not saying that it is mandatory it is compulsory client has asked you and nothing like that if you are going to do that when no one is going to respect you at least they will respect you on your face and the moment you uh, come out of that room or come out of that uh, call is they they are going uh, they will be going back to the square, uh, square one so this is how you are supposed to handle uh, this anti pattern any uh, questions on this uh, no ramya but uh, thanks for uh, sharing with us uh, your experience appreciate it okay thank you all right uh, next anti pattern is hardening sprint this is also an interesting uh, anti pattern how many of you have uh, done this hardening sprint or is even aware of this anyone in stopping the sprint or hardening means sorry stopping the sprint no hardening sprint is uh, one additional uh, sprint uh, that people add or people uh, kind of uh, work on apart from the uh, actual sprints so hardening sprint this is also something i have uh, i think uh, devender you wanted to add something no is is uh, something different means i did not get you what you are saying okay. so hardening sprint uh, is uh, something the additional sprint that people or uh, maybe it's it could be the collaborative decision uh, of this scrum team that they decide to add after you are uh, you have uh, completed your the sprint work for an example if you have planned for any release okay so and in that release uh, there would be say to complete that mvp or you uh, to complete that particular functionalities it would require say three sprints okay and after sprint 3 you realize that 
there are certain pending items there are certain uh, outstanding bugs there, there are certain feedback points or some re code refactoring that your team uh, is supposed to do and because of that you plan to have a hardening sprint after completing three sprints so here in this case or in this example i have mentioned three sprints that doesn't mean that you do hardening sprint after a uh, three sprint in this example since we planned for or agreed upon for uh, three sprints is is what after that third sprint uh, you add this hardening sprint so this is the commonly practiced uh, anti pattern but this as i mentioned this is anti pattern we do not have anything called as hardening sprint hardening sprint is a uh, is observed where we have component team structure so what do we mean by component team team structure if your team is not cross functional that means if your team is bifurcated or divided or team is formed based on the technology that means one team will be front end team one team will be back end team and one team would be testing team so testing team will be working in silo and there would be one front end team which would be dependent on one back end team so if we have team structures this way then there would be a need of an hardening sprint because we do not have the cross functionality within our within our uh, team so this again is the anti pattern and if you want to avoid this one way of doing it is and also one more reason strong reason why we have hardening sprint is we mark uh, work items user stories features epics even when our definition of done is not met or if there are any bugs open uh, under that particular user story feature or epic we say that okay basic functionality is working fine then we are marking it as closed and we will take care of the sprints in the next release after this or after that in such situations all the accumulated bugs are addressed in this hardening sprint so one way of uh, addressing this issue is to have cross functional team second is to be strict on definition of done criteria unless and until your definition of done criteria is not met you are not supposed to close any work item and if your definition of done is not even written properly it is also a need for you to revisit your definition of done so that there is no uh, situation of hardening sprint over here also testing act testing should not be taken as a separate activity it should be in tandem with your uh, development uh, team or uh, development uh, cycle so within the sprint so if that also happens again as a separate phase or separate sprint then hardening sprint uh, is born in that situations so wherever you see or wherever even you might not be calling it as hardening sprint but then wherever you see that we need an extra sprint to do this pending activities that means you are doing an anti pattern i hope uh, that is clear devender yeah yeah now it's clear yeah well said okay and the last anti pattern uh, is shuffling team members from scrum team why it is an anti pattern this is not really really an anti pattern but then it is uh, indirectly an anti pattern why uh, shuffling team members uh, is a problem so what happens is when you, when you form a team uh, you can uh, rely on that team to deliver value and deliver a uh, certain uh, uh, value with certain velocity so when you say that your velocity is dropping or ve your velocity is uh, not consistent and which again that should not be your barometer for progress or uh, high performing team but what i'm trying to say is if your team is delivering value that means they are working with certain uh, set of team members who are working with each other with a lot of 
collaboration, trust, and respect with each other. The moment you change, you see any changes in the team dynamics, is when you would see something going um, uh, 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 topsy turvy in your team, which could be like. Uh, there would be some uh, spillovers or the velocity has dropped or there would be some conflicts happening. That is the reason why you should try to have a dedicated team uh, with the uh, dedicated team size or with the same team uh, members if you want to see a real uh, value delivery or real progress. So if you keep on shuffling team members here and there or uh, if not you as a a uh, scrum master, someone from the management team comes and uh, picks one person from here. Uh, the one of the anti patterns which I spoke that as uh, the uh, management assigns the uh, ad hoc tasks, right? So that person will be picked from that scrum team and will be given some other uh, work item to work upon. Then that person will not be part of the scrum team in that particular sprint. So what happens is the dependencies that team members had on that person will not be resolved. Plus there was a rapport that was built. There was a trust that a team had. On that person, so these are the uh, factors that are not directly visible to us, but are very important to have that safe working environment, maintaining that psychological uh, safety that we call about. So we should ensure that unless there is some uh, major things happening or drastic uh, things going on. We should not uh, think of sh shuffling the team members from one team to another. We should not be doing that. OK, this person today is working on Scrum Team 1. Tomorrow in the next sprint would be working in uh, Scrum Team 2. He should be part of that Scrum Team or maybe 50 percent working in this Scrum Team. Next uh, sprint would be seeing that and uh, he would be working in say scrum team 3 50%. So these are all the anti patterns of uh, scrum uh, in terms of reshuffling the uh, scrum team members. All right, that's it. I had uh, on the anti patterns. Anything that you would like to just. Add on anyone or anything that you would like to know. Vivek, would you like to add anything from your end? Um, I mean, uh, whatever Rame, you have covered, those, those are uh, quite a uh, good list of number, but yeah, then there is one more uh, common Anti pattern, I would say, is like uh, you know, uh, I have experienced as like uh, a single engineering team being managed by two product owners altogether. So it again altogether becomes an anti pattern where you see uh, there is one engineering team uh, managing two different products from working for two different set of product with two different product owners. Uh, it again altogether becomes challenging for the team to uh, deliver two parallel uh, de delivery things together. So that is one of the common product, uh, uh, common uh, anti patterns that I have experienced or I have seen as a scrum master. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, I guess you have, you know, pretty much covered uh, over here, Ramya. Uh, that's that's now there's nothing much to add from my end. Yes, that is also a very good point that uh, product owners handling uh, more than one scrum team for that matter even scrum master handling like I have seen scrum masters handling three teams, four teams altogether. That again uh, is an anti pattern over here. All right, uh, anything from anyone uh, to be added or uh, to ask? No, OK, if uh, nothing else, then I think uh, we can uh, close the call. Thank you everyone for joining the call today and uh, have a nice weekend.